Welcome back to the End Zone. Scarlet Nation here, Matt Halatic, Bobby Darren. We're here after Rutgers' 35-10 win over Temple. Matt, Rutgers goes to 7-0 in the season, 4-0 in the Big East. But, you know, it, it didn't look so uh, so pretty from the start. Rutgers goes down 10-0 and going in the half. And uh, you got the feel that it was, you know, maybe an upset. Well, as soon as that 10-0 score hits at halftime, a lot of RU fans are looking around saying, oh no, we've seen this before. This is Cincinnati in 2006. This is Connecticut in 2011. But this 2012 team seems to be a little bit different. You know, there was no real panic. It was a gut check time, let's be honest. They, this game could have made, made or bro uh, make or break their season, you know, with the fact that if they lose, it really puts a crimp in their BCS hopes. But they came out really strong in the second half and put Temple away. You know, and there really didn't seem to be a sense in talking with the players and even head coach Kyle Flood after the game. There was never any worry. Uh, let's hear what head coach Kyle Flood had to say following the win. The first half, I thought our defense did a tremendous job of fighting through some very uphill field position situations to, to limit Temple to 10 points. That was one of the bigger events in the game as we went forward because it certainly could have been more had we not played as good a defense as we did in the first half. And then I think in the second half, we were able to execute offensively. I don't think it was any more than that. I wish I could tell you that there was a magical halftime speech you know, that you give to a team, but the message was, was very simple and very clear for myself and every coach on the staff. We need to execute that. Rutgers comes out, uh, second half, Matt, they, you know, first drive, Six plays, touchdown, Tim Wright, 32-yard touchdown pass, and just like that, it's a brand new ball game. You could feel kind of the, moment, uh, the momentum shifting. And, uh, you know, Timmy talked about that after the game. Let's hear what he had to say. Basically, you know, just trying to be that guy, that racer. Try to be that guy to step up on the scene. I'm a captain. You know, I've been here for a long time. The guys depend on me. I just try to be that leader and lead by action. What you tell the guys? That? I just tell the guys, you know, just to keep your head up. Uh, you know, it's going to be a long game. We got a whole second half because obviously it was it was tough to you know keep the guys up in the first half. But second half things started rolling for us. Everybody started believing again that everything we did in the offseason, everything we worked hard for, was going to pay off, and it did. Tim Wright with one touchdown, uh, Rutgers with four through the air. Uh, Kasim Green, the other one on defense, uh, picked up a fumble, ran that one in. And, uh, you know, Gary was kind of settling in in the second half. And uh, what were your thoughts on him? I know you spoke to him afterwards. Well, from the outsider's view, it might have looked like they were really, really struggling in the first half. But he insisted it was more so just a couple things that needed fine-tuning. They were almost there. They just needed to hit on some of those big plays. They certainly did that in the second half. And here's what the sophomore quarterback had to say. Definitely, uh, we felt like we were just that. We were doing one thing wrong, you know, they kill momentum, you know, whether you get a big play, then it was a penalty, or, you know, me fumbling and stuff like that. Just, you know, it was a bad day on my part, and, you know, just try to come here and have time to regroup and go out there and just feel like we did. You know, adversity is going to happen. You just got to deal with it and move on. You can't let it affect the next series, which I don't think we did, and I'm going out there and execute. Again, Rutgers coming back from a 10-0 deficit, and, you know, there seems to be a lot of leadership on this team, more so than I've seen in past years. And you can kind of see it and feel it, and when the guys talk about it, they execute it. It's not just, you know, kind of kind of hearsay or, or, you know, just words. I know you talked to some of the guys afterwards, the seniors, and what was the tone there? Well, Steve Baharnas has certainly been an emotional leader. He's certainly been, you know, a vocal leader for this team this season. And he said, you know, the tone w was definitely a little bit different going into the second half, they knew there were some things that they had to pick up on defense and as a team. Let's hear what those things were. Just a little bit more urgency went up early. We didn't do anything, we didn't do anything uh, special. We had to just keep uh, doing our assignments and we did that and uh, we liked the result that we had today. Uh, you talk about that result. In the second half, was there a specific point that you could kind of sense from the, their offense, that maybe the wind went out of their sails or did they kind of were defeated or was it just kind of gradual? Well, I mean, they did a great job, you know, I mean, they hit us with a couple of things that we uh, we haven't seen. You know, what I mean, they they did a good job of uh, taking advantage of what we do. But you know, we had to buckle down. I mean, sometimes you just gotta go straight ahead. You know, what I mean, you gotta man up and uh, be tough, and that's exactly what we did. But it was next to no. So at least from the defensive side, it was just about man up and being tough and doing our job. And you know, and, and when you do that, you get a, you get a good result. Two new captains walking out today. I uh, still have the same captains, but you know, week to week, some guys will go out for the coin toss. Uh, today it was along with, uh, you know, the guys who've been going out there all year, Kasim Green, Mason Robinson. It was also Khalil Bud and Brandon Jones. And uh, Khalil talked about, you know, this team not worrying about that first half deficit 
and uh, just keeping things together, man. And, you know, had a pretty nice day. He was very active. I know he's not the most eye-popping numbers, but uh, let's hear what he had to say following the game. Uh, they came out punching, they came out swinging as soon as we started the game off. We had to just get our feet underneath us, and when we came inside the locker room, we knew what it was, uh, we knew it was in for a fight. It was all up to the challenge. We knew that all we had to do was come out and just play our defense, and we did, and that's why we came out victorious. What do you tell some of the guys as a senior captain today, too? Uh, just tell them, just, just calm down. Whatever's going on, we're just making mental mistakes, and as soon as we get our feet inside the ground and everything like that, everything's going to be okay. So I told everybody, don't panic, and we're going to come over top, and we're going to play great defense. The win again moves Rutgers to 7-0, undefeated in Big East play, three games left, 4-0 uh, in the conference. Uh, Matt, did you see this kind of coming, you know, earlier in the season? Well, the players, it's talked about it, you know, they said our ultimate goal is to win the Big East, win the Big East, but, you know, talk doesn't really mean anything when the program hasn't done it yet. You know, they have not accomplished, you know, that, uh, that goal, that elusive goal of winning a conference title. But now I'm seeing it, there's definitely a different vibe than in previous years. This team is really focused, they're really driven. It's definitely something that you could feel and you could see uh, in, in action. Yeah, and you know, Scott Malone talked about being 7-0. Uh, let's hear what he had to say following the game. It's a great, it's a great feeling, you know, to, to come out on top in, in seven straight games and to be undefeated at this point and have all our goals out in front of us, controlling our own destiny. Uh, we just got to continue to stay focused. We got a, um, a very good team in Kent State who only has one loss at this point. Um, so they're, they're definitely a, a formidable opponent who's uh, coming in next week and they're going to come on the road trying to get a win. Uh, next up for Rutgers, Kent State. Um, you know, having a good year in the MAC, but again, you know, it's MAC conference. It's, it's kind of a step down in competition. How do you see things playing out next week, man? Well, it's an interesting kind of contrast in the fact that they're going to want to push the tempo on offense. They do have a pretty, you know, solid offensive unit, even though it is the MAC. Mm -hmm. um, Rutgers will be home, you know, homecoming. You expect a big crowd. You know, the bandwagon's starting to fill up, 7 0. Now the championship goals are even more uh, in focus. Uh, it'll definitely be another game where Rutgers is favored. You know, I don't expect Kent State to be, you know, a pushover, but I do expect Rutgers, you know, that's a game that, you know, they should win next week. So predicting the win? Uh, right. As of right now, I'm going to go out and, you know, I'm going to keep, keep in line with what I've been saying. I think they're going to win next okay. week. Okay, you know, and I think today another thing, not only do they get another win, but it, it seemed like they turned another corner, which this season's been full of... Uh, I guess, could I say corner turning? Yeah. Uh, you know, South Florida, they're down. You know, Gary Nova turned a corner. The team came back. Uh, Arkansas was another little corner. Today, you know, they've been winning games, and they've been in control, but today they really, you know, kind of put their foot down on the gas and went full throttle through that third and fourth quarter, and there was no doubt about it. They weren't letting the team back in. So uh, we'll see how that carries over. Matt Halatic already predicting a win next week. Uh, you know, homecoming will be back in the Rutgers end zone here at Lincoln Financial Field. Matt Halatic, Bobby Dara for Scarlet Nation. We'll see you next time.